Hey, good morning, my friends. Hello, hello. Might not be morning in your part of the world, but it's morning for me. <laughs> Here it is. What is it? It's the 5th of August. It's my son's birthday, 17 today. Happy birthday, Jaden. Um, it's the 5th of August, 2020, and I'm just putting my drink together because I was running late. And it's nine o'clock in the morning here in New Zealand. Um, let's chat with Matt. We're here in the bright light being group with any luck. That's where I've managed to land. I am about to check on my computer um, and see if there's any questions written in so we can answer them. And or you are welcome when you get to this, which no one has yet, but it always takes time. But for those of you watching the replay, so you know what the procedure is for the next one, uh, just ask. Just write something in and we will do our best to uh, answer you. You know, and I will say that my, Matt Mantara's, uh, strong intention is not necessarily to deliver accurate intellectual information, but we're here as facilitators of transformation to do just that, to facilitate transformation, empowered evolution, growth, um, so that people can uh, step into it, right? So it's not about, quote unquote, getting it right. Hey, Sister Jane, it's not about, you know, because at the moment, what the fuck's right? <laughs> You know, once we start to understand that all information is relative to people observing the information or relative to people who are interacting with the information, you know, what's right for someone is not right for someone else. Um, and I know we tend to think, yes, but, and we always have a case where something has to be absolutely wrong, um, but the rule holds. So, but the point is, and we don't need to get too caught up in that, but the point is, is to get out of, for your own sake, the stress of trying to know the right information. Hey, Sister Maggie, the right information and the wrong information so that you stay on the right side of that equation so that your information is the right information and everyone else's or, you know, other people have the wrong information and therefore you're better off and you're safer and you're going to succeed and they're not. Um, it's a quite an immature... Uh, attitude that is very, very prevalent in our society. And of course, our society is continually playing on that to keep us in a level of stress because we're always worried whether our information's wrong or not. So we're always looking for proof to back up our information um, and proof to disprove other people's information. And of course, what we look for, we find because we're viewing it through filters that want to do what they want to do. So we don't stay impartial, therefore we taint or slant, or flavor, everything that's coming in through our, our senses and how it's being cognated or processed. Ultimately, what's gonna help you stay safe is to stay relaxed. And what's gonna help you to stay relaxed is the idea that nothing's wrong or right, so you don't need to worry about that. And that then gives you a much more neutral perspective for which to view information that is presented to you. And you can inquire into that information from the space of, does this serve me? Not whether it's wrong or right, because that's far too complex for your mind to figure out most of the time, because you're, according to who, right? Even if it's just according to yourself, you've got so many different criteria that you're trying to put things into uh, for it to fit in the right bucket or the wrong bucket. But if it's just a simple question as, does it serve me? Again, that can be on different levels because, you know, does it serve me egoically to believe this? Quite possibly. Does it serve me, you know, emotionally to, to believe this? Does it serve me implicitly, you know, in the bigger picture? Does this take me towards my long-term goals, my big goals? Or does this just appease my short-term goals to stay comfortable and not have my boat rocked, you know. Please feel free to write anything in while I uh, keep raving. I'm about to look, did I just hit the refresh button? I'm about to look to find out if anything was pre-written here. There I am, so I'm in the right place. There's the thing. So the <laughs> little poster I put up last night, I choose to say, yes, I can to my dreams. For those of you, hey, it's brother Glenn, how are you? Uh, for those of you who watched uh, or saw in this feed, I walked, whenever that was, a few days ago now. Uh, no, it was last week, wasn't it, when I beat my time. I actually did the walk again on Monday and just was 10 seconds off my new best time, so it was also a very good time. And what was really pleasing about that when I walked on Monday is I felt really good when I got to the top. I thought I'd been sort of cruising, bludging, and I wasn't expecting to have nearly as fast the time. So that's exciting. 
Um, but anyway, the week before, I did a little live stream from the top of my hill here at the back of Waikanae um, that I, you know, just smashed another five seconds off my personal best for walking up that hill. And I was talking about the mantra that was going through my head as I, as I was, you know, huffing and puffing up the hill, um, which is basically yes as I inhale and thank you as I exhale, right? Really choosing a powerful version of gratitude and appreciation. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. You know, choosing to receive and being grateful for what I'm receiving, which in that case was more oxygen <laughs> as I was bouncing my heart off the off the rev limiter, <laughs> off the red line, um, up the hill, because I do go as fast as I can. That's part of that's part of the fun. Um, I can't remember where the point goes. Oh, so this this appealed to me last night when I was scrolling through some of my old posters. I choose to say, yes, I can to my dreams, uh, which is important. Right, it is important that we start saying yes to our dreams and stop saying yes to other people. I'm looking to see if anyone wrote anything in ahead of time. Here we go. I'm easily distracted. That's the case. Hey, Sister Jackie, if I didn't say yes, hello to you, but a minute ago. Um, Louise, me too, saying yes to your dreams, no doubt. Uh, and it's all happening right here and right now. And so it is and so it shall be. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome, not exactly a question, Louise, Sister Louise, but a, an awesome addition because, um, and I was just talking to someone yesterday, uh, last night actually, from Sweden, one of my clients, uh, who's having an awesome run. I'm, I'm loving it. I've got quite a few clients now who are really hitting their straps. And um, interestingly, the clients that are really doing well are the clients who come more consistently. And they don't come to fix a problem, but they come because they value our service in helping them to drive them forward into their best outcomes, into their dreams. They are saying yes to their dreams. And so, um, yeah, I was talking with her last night about uh, one of her things that's very strong for her right now is I am here now, right? I am here now, present and, and complete here now I am, right? Strong, strong affirmation. Simple, simple, but very, very powerful. And this is the same like this, yes, thank you. And as Louise just pointed out, yes, thank you. My dreams living right now, they exist right now. If they're in your, if you can uh, conceptualize them in your head, right, they exist. And it's time to actualize them into your experience, which just happens through a couple of things. Firstly, energetic alignment, which is basically when you get very, very resonant, uh, aligned with that vibration of your dreams. You just choose to keep aligning with it, raising yourself up into it, vibrating at the same. You make it real for yourself internally, vibrationally, feeling emotionally. You make it very real for yourself. And two, you take what might perceive as risky actions to step towards that, right? You risk getting disappointed. You risk being rejected. You risk uh, being judged by others. Oh, I forgot to plug into the friggin' internet this morning. That's not helping. Let's do that. Hopefully, hopefully it's just gonna swap over. This could be a massive disaster, but I'm prepared to take the risk. We'll see. Uh, I forgot to plug my ethernet cable in. So I was running on cellular, no doubt. Um, hopefully it's gonna be stronger now, if it wasn't strong for you before. Um, so my friends, how can I help you? I don't think, I haven't noticed anyone write anything in, but I will go back here in case Jackie wrote in, hey, I've been using your mantra, so I am missing, uh, requests, uh, missing comments. This thing doesn't always tell me everything. This phone. I need to put that on silent. Awesome. I love that you've been using my mantra, Jackie. You're welcome to it. It's not really mine. <laughs> I don't own that. I don't have a patent on that. Um, and sister Teresa Olga from um, the UK. Welcome. How else? Hey, Sister Mary, what, what, how can I help you guys? What's going on for you? What else? Uh, yesterday, I did an a interview with Kerry Murphy, which was uh, quite good, I think. Uh, from my perspective, I had a good time anyway. <laughs> it really counts. I had a good time. So we were talking about sleep, but we're talking about a lot more than just 
quote unquote sleep and it's not just for it's not just a, a call for the insomniacs um it was a good call around you know have, maintaining an empowered attitude towards everything you know, but including stress and how our society is unfolding and all the rest of it um and so i have put a you know link in this group i believe i put the link to the replay which is no opt-in required you just basically click on it and listen to it um, so there you go, there's a 90 minute call there, uh, because we didn't do our full moon call yesterday morning, which I had been making a bit of a, um, tradition, but we will do a call for the 8th of the 8th, the Lion's Gate, and I will probably do it, um, on the 8th here in New Zealand, so it'll be the 7th in the Americas and the UK, I will do it at 8am, I haven't put it in my calendar yet, but I was just thinking about this as I was doing my practice this morning. So it'll be a little bit ahead of time for you guys, but that's okay because the line gate's kind of open anyway and we're just really working towards it. Awesome, Mary, I'm glad you enjoyed the call. I am hopeful. Okay, Jackie, I, I, I actually have an interesting relationship with the word hope because uh, it feels a little disempowered to me. It's kind of like I'm relying on something else to, to achieve it if I'm just hopeful. Um, but hope hope is a great thing for people who have no hope. Um, it's a, definitely a step up from being hopeless, which I know I've been at in a lot of times in my life, feeling hopeless, that nothing I do is going to fix it anyway, so hopeless. So having hope's a great step, but I like to step past hope and into confidence and into choosing. Awesome, I'm just going to read that in a second. Um, brother Brett, um, ah, okay, so we're holding space for Gary, having both lungs drained, that doesn't sound like much fun, <sighs> but, you know, there's a lot going on in his body as he's coping, you know, post-operation with, you know, inflammation and, and you know, tr trauma, <laughs> having your chest opened up, so, not surprising, I'm, I'm, I'm not choosing, it doesn't feel like that's everything going horribly wrong. It feels like just a normal part of maintenance after such uh, a big experience as open heart surgery. So, but definitely holding space for that. Anyway, what I was gonna say is that, so we're gonna have a call, it will be um, just free or by donation. Um, it'll be this Saturday morning for me here in New Zealand at 8 a.m for, uh, no, yes, Saturday morning, which is the 8th, right? Have I got that right or have I gone completely the wrong way? No, I think I'm right. Um, I have to look at the calendar though. Yes, Saturday is the 8th for me. So it'll be on the 8th at 8 a.m. here in New Zealand. Um, for the Americas, it will be on the 7th, Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Central Time, 4 p.m. Eastern. You can work it out, 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Um, and of course, it'll work in, in um, what do I need to do? Get back to the thing. It'll be fine in replay as well for those of you who aren't available then. Um, and you'll be able to listen to it sometime between then and uh, the 8th the eighth for you. Or the eight, on the 8th the 8th for that matter. Because the intention with these calls always, like with the full moon and stuff, is we do it in the time that has strong significance where I am. <clears throat> and we record that so that it can... Um, so that it can continue. The vibration can affect you whenever you choose to listen to it in a positive way. So, Brother Brett. Hi, Matt. Starting a spiritual business with my son, Timothy, focused on crystals, etc. Awesome. I love that. Um, as we have both been getting a sense to do that, knowing how to get started and feeling confident in these economic times to invest in that and follow our vision can be challenging. Yes. Yes, so you know, like everything, risk basic uh, reward follows risks. So you know, if everything is easy and obvious, then we're unlikely to be rewarded. Not necessarily completely impossible for us to be rewarded well, but unlikely to be rewarded well. Normally, to to get something that is valuable, we need to be willing to take a risk, and it doesn't need to be necessarily any massive external risk. Um, but a level of risk to step forward into a more expansive version of ourselves always feels risky. So that challenge is there and that challenge is there for you to overcome, Brett, and, you know, rely on Timothy a lot too, because at his age, um, he is not so 
contracted around the financial risk. So let him lead you with his in, intuitive knowing. Of course, you have to, you know, change the languaging a little and and you know make sense of it. But but ultimately, I would encourage you, Brett, to really go into this business with a childlike curiosity and wonder and awe, right? Because that's what crystals are, right? They're fucking magic. So allow yourself to really take that attitude into this business. Um, Thank you, Messenger. Um, that was good news too. So that was good. Uh, so take that attitude into this business and really be willing to step forward and display that vibration out to the world, right? Display, you know, really hold that vibration. Really make this the, you know, how you set up your 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 sales page and your, you know, your catalog or whatever. Really make it very magical right childlike and magical and fun don't get too serious about the crystals um be really fun about them and, and make it you know a point of difference maybe you know is to is to make it a little bit more childlike you know not childish but childlike and innocent and fun and and quirky in in how you present those crystals the photos you <clears throat> take of them and stuff like that so that you do have a point of difference right because um, that's what business is about. And I think as we move forward in all businesses, people are looking to do business with people that they like. Uh, that it's We've moved out of the age where it's just about comparing products and trying to get the cheapest price. I think the society in general, of course, there's a big section of society still caught there, but your best clients are going to want to buy off you because they're invested in your story, your story, Brent, and Timothy's story and your story together in running a father-son um, business you know, peddling crystals. I think it's an awesome idea and um, I think it's got great potential, uh, especially when you draw on the strength of that. Your story is the strength and your vibration and, and your purity and your desire to um, bring the best products to the best people with, with, with that intention, right? The intention that's behind supplying the crystals is to share the magic as opposed to quote unquote, just make money. So when you really voice that and express that and be visual with that, um, I think you'll do really well. So don't get too caught up in the, I don't know how, and just allow yourself to make it up. You can't go too far wrong, right? It's, you know, I know there's a bit of investment in, in, in buying some stock and stuff and getting a website up, but Reasonably, you don't need to start with a massive stock, right? Allow yourself to test the waters before you, you know, go too gung ho with, you know, how big your stock is, and um, have fun with it. Have fun with. Ultimately, you want to have fun with this because if you're having fun with it, you're going to be vibrating a fun vibration, which is going to attract people to to your crystals, right? And then you just need to uh, get out there. Social media is an awesome opportunity right now to to you know, put fun posts out there, social posts, not just buy my stuff, buy my stuff, but fun social posts out there that attract people to go and have a look at your website. You know, appeal to the magic and people. people. People are looking for magic right now. I think more than ever, people are really, really, uh, would be really appreciative of lightheartedness in this serious fucking soup of society that we're living in, right? Where most stuff that's being presented is pretty dire in some way or another or, conf you know, conflictory. Um, and bringing some lightness to the to, to the online experience for most people is, is appreciated. And if they appreciate what you're bringing to them, they're going to um, appreciate buying some of your stuff, right? How does that sound? Have you to keep bouncing... With any any with either Brett or anyone else who has comment on that topic, it is a topic that's dear to me. I, I love helping people do well in you know any heart centered service provider. You don't have to be you know a quote unquote energy facilitator. Uh, selling crystals is is great. Um, I work with I work with you know a, a normal beauty therapist who does normal beauty things. Uh, you know, eyelashes and eyebrows and friggin' facials and massages and all of that. But she's doing it from a space where she really wants to bring out people's inner beauty. And so that's a heart-centered service provider, right? She's looking to help women while doing all of their makeup-y type stuff, beauty therapy stuff, bring out their inner beauty. 
uh, you know, and I'm very, very happy to work to help her business thrive from that attitude. I work with a couple of nurses in Australia who help um, prevent elderly people from, from having falls. Generally, they help a lot of other people too, but that's kind of the crux of their business, you know. Um, they call themselves the Fall Girls, talking of having fun, right? They call themselves the Fall Girls. A couple of nurses who, you know, um, specialise in helping people minimise the chance that they could fall over um, because they recognise that falls is one of the leading causes of elderly people losing their empowered sense of freedom. Um, and so that's important to me, right? Because those are heart-centred service providers. It's not just people who do the quote-unquote woo-woo shit like I do. <laughs> of course, they have to be open to a little bit of it because <laughs> that's how I help them. But, um, <clears throat> but yeah, Brett. Thanks, Matt. Rings very true. Timothy has telling me to be more playful. The, the beauty is doing with him as he is starting to open his own gifts, which are very strong. Yeah, so really what I would encourage you is to really allow Timothy to um, describe what the crystals are for. Get Let go of the fucking textbook about, you know, the tiger's eyes for confidence and rose quartz is for love. And let Timothy pick up the crystal and tell you, so you can write it down, what this crystal helps people with. I think that would be great. I think that would be awesome. You know, and you could put the, you could put underneath, you could put, traditionally this crystal is used for this. Timothy says, right, as the headline, Timothy says this crystal is good for this. Right? I reckon that is an awesome slant on it, allowing, you know, a child's intuition to really read the crystal and how it's going to help people. Because who the fuck's to say that Tiger's Eye, which I happen to have sitting right here, um, amongst many other crystals, is, um, yeah, he just knows. So who's to say that this definitely is for building people's self-esteem and confidence. This is a crystal that is for the, you know, second chakra, a third chakra because it's got yellow in it, right? <laughs> right? Who's to say that that's the absolute truth? And who's to say that's the truth moving forward into this now moment, right? That this crystal is only for that. Because crystals are magic and they can be for anything. So really, I would I would trust you to build your whole website around Timothy's um, innate knowing of what crystals are for. And as I said, you could always subtext that, that traditionally this is what this crystal's um, thought of as doing, but but headline Timothy's view on them. Why not? Why not? People who love crystals are going to love them anyway because ultimately, do you really buy a crystal because, you know, it's written in the fucking crystal Bible that this does this and this and this, or do you buy it because it just feels good? <laughs> It feels nurturing. This feels like this feels like something that's supporting me in this now moment. And we tend to, those of us who like crystals, you know, we have a whole selection of them because at different times we are drawn to a different vibration. And this one feels more nurturing to me, or this one feels more inspiring to me, or this one feels more grounding to me at a different time than maybe the soda light. You know, this is what I need right now. And Anyone who works with crystals in an empowered way doesn't do that through the fucking intellectual knowledge. They do it by just basically reaching their hand over the crystals and picking up the one that feels best in the moment because that's how it works. Our body knows the... almost dropped it. Our body knows what vibration really um, serves us in the moment. Not our mind, you know, not our mind. Not analysing, oh, I'm feeling this and this and this and this means I'm ungrounded, therefore I need to have this grounding rock and it's going to, you know, it's such a diminished way of doing the world. And I believe we're going to see more and more that it's falling away. This mental de desire to analyse and understand and to make recommendation and, and choose what we're doing based on a mental analysis of the situations. And we're going to get much more intuitive, much more in the moment and much more loose and fun and happy with how we choose to progress forward. Awesome. What else, my friends? We've still got another five minutes or so. Happy to keep talking on spiritual businesses um, or any businesses for that matter or any other topic that you uh, feel to bring to the surface as long as I can sort of deliver it reasonably quickly. <laughs> hey, Sister Louise. You're welcome, brother, Brett. I'm looking forward to um, seeing it come through my Facebook feed that uh, Timothy's Crystal of the Week or whatever 
posts you're putting out there um, to, to attract people to have a look at your website when it's up. Looking forward to it. Yes, I've already spoken to uh, here and now, Sister Louise, at the start of the call, pretty much, because it is, we're all here and now. We're all here and now. Um, there's no other place, right? No other place that's important for our dreams to manifest. It's in taking steps here and now, just like Brother Brett's doing. Here and now is the time to, you know, launch a business. I think it's a great time. There's so much fear and <clears throat> contraction out there in the world that so many people are playing uh, safe, you know, cowering down and just trying to survive this situation. It's, it's, it's very hard for people to want to take risks right now when the world seems so rocky. But I tell you what, this is when fortunes are made. Um, when, when times are rough out there and the majority of the population is in fear mode, it's the time to be bold and to step out. And that doesn't mean, you know, just trying to buy a bunch of stocks of something. I'm talking about stepping out and being yourself in this time. The world needs more and more people to step into being confident in themselves right now because the world is lacking, the population, the society is lacking confidence in itself right now. And confidence is one thing it's easy to sell right now. And I'm not saying to sell that in some sort of markety fucking thing way. But, you know, when we really just show up in confidence as ourselves, people really appreciate that. And when people appreciate something, they're willing to invest in it. So now is a great time to show up and lead. Doesn't mean standing on a soapbox and telling people what to do. Not that sort of leadership. I mean, showing up as an example of what we're all being called to do, which is to be more innately real um, and less and less the persona of getting it right as we talked earlier about you know trying to ascertain which is what information is right and what information is wrong what's the right way to be and what's the wrong way to be should i be wearing a mask should i be wearing a mask you know contentious issues but ultimately at the end of the day it just doesn't fucking matter it doesn't matter be yourself in your heart that's what's important right to really express your own heart knowing and not to get too caught up in these surface issues that are just designed to divide the population and keep us fighting against each other and diminishing our vibration. It's time to let go of that. Um, and so starting a business right now is awesome, in my opinion. It's an awesome time to really step up into expressing yourself and doing what really feels nurturing and nourishing and deeply important to you what are you passionate about now's the time to step into your passions now's the time to start living your dreams even though you know most people are just trying to quote unquote survive and most people are trying to figure out what they need to do to survive what you need to do to survive right now is to step into thriving that's the best way to, to survive i know i know people get very risk averse when times look uncertain but it is exactly the time to take those types of risks to step forward into being yourself, to put yourself out there in a more expansive way. That's my two cents worth. Anyway, might prove wrong, quote unquote. <laughs> it's really not that serious. What's the worst that happens? You die and, you know, we're so much more than a physical body. I'm not saying throw your life away willy-nilly, not in any stretch of the imagination, but truly, if you've bothered coming here and you're going through the shit on this planet, you may as well have a good time. <laughs> if you've bothered coming into a body, then you may as well have a good time. That's my opinion anyway. And so there's no point just trying to get to the grave safely. Live, live your freaking life. Take some risks, be it. Tell someone you love them, right? I know that's cliche, but it's true. Take the risk. What could possibly go wrong? A little bit of rejection, a little bit of pain and disappointment. You know, don't live a half-assed life because you're too scared to be disappointed. That's ridiculous. I know, I know I can say it's ridiculous. And then I'll look back at the, you know, I'm a couple of months off turning 50. And I look back at most of those years and that's exactly how I've lived, right? Just trying to stay safe, trying to avoid risking disappointments and rejections and, and getting it wrong. Um, to protect my delicate little ego against, you know, the vibrations that have been left there from other lifetimes. It's time to step forward and get over that stuff, right? It's time to really step out of that, um, I'm not enjoying the lighting on my face. 
not making me look young at all. Uh, <laughs> we're only as old as we look. No, I think it's supposed to be you feel. But um, yeah, lighting's important. Um, <laughs> so is vanity. It's an important aspect of being a human. Um, <laughs> he said looking like me. It's pretty funny. What else, my friends? I'm pretty, we've pretty much done it. Uh, it's 9.31 here. So that was chat with Matt. Hopefully I've entertained you and maybe you've even gained some inspiration um, from this experience of spending some time with me. We've lived lifetimes of that already. It's time to do something different. Exactly. We've lived lifetimes of cowering down and trying to protect ourselves from the dark beings that have ruled this planet for quite a while. It's time to just regain our magical essence as beings of light and fucking step forward into being it. That's it. There's nothing to get right here. We are light beings. You can't get that wrong. Just allow others to see the being that you be and step forward into it. It's pretty friggin' simple at the end of the day, but yet it's not so easy just to step past that resistance and that res limitation and the <gasps> we feel when we you know contemplate taking such a risk. But there you go. Much, much love, my friends. I will talk to you again soon. As I said at the start of this call, I'll say it again at the end, we are going to do a call on the 8th of the 8th here for the Lions Gate. It will be the 8th of the 8th in New Zealand. So for you guys in the UK, uh, I'm going to do it at 8 a.m. my time. So it will be 9 p.m. UK time on the 7th. And in the Americas, it will be 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific time. I'm not going to give you everything. I know because there's another time zone on the other side of Eastern. Um... <laughs> which obviously it'll be 5 p.m. for, but I can't remember the name of that time zone. But I know that very far reach of Canada's in it and probably some of Brazil or something. Maybe, I'm not sure. Um, but <laughs> just trying to think of my geography. Time zones don't follow straight lines, so they're all over the friggin' show. Um, as Portugal is a good representation of, which is actually further, you know, underneath England and yet is uh, in France's time zone. <laughs> Go figure. Um, must get light very early or very late there in the mornings. Um, but anyway, who am I to make decisions for other countries about what they do with their time zones? Uh, so yes, I'll be doing that call because we didn't do our um, we didn't do our full moon call yesterday. I was doing a telesummit call instead. But that telesummit call is awesome. It's a 90 minute call. It's kind of loosely around the idea of empowered sleep and, and getting your optimal blissful sleep. But there's a lot more to it than just talking about sleep. So uh, and there was three different light language um, sessions in there, mini sessions. So uh, worth listening to. It is up or below this uh, post in this feed in the Bright Light Beings group, uh, a direct link. You don't need to opt in. You don't need to give your email address. You can just listen to it and enjoy it. Um, I love interview calls. It's nearly as fun as this because someone's like, I'm actually talking to someone, not just um, a bunch of you. Guys. Well, not just. Anyway, um, it, it usually, the, the good thing about having a host is they tend to keep me on a straight line, more of a straight line, <laughs> if that's a good thing or not. I don't know. Anyway, I said I'm getting off this. Namaste, my friends. I will be posting very shortly the link. Um, it will basically be a free link, so you can just come on. I will uh, post the opportunity to make a donation if you feel to for that 8 8 um, call. It's on abundance, of course, because that's what the Lion's Gate is all about. And abundance is not just money. It's being an abundance of ourselves. It's a, taking an abundance of life force and yeah, an abundance of opportunity to express yourself in expansive ways. Uh, that's what abundance is all about. It's about getting out of lack mentality, the idea that you don't have enough or that you need more. Um, so we're going to do that in whatever it is, four days, uh, two, three days time. Anyway, much, much love. Enjoy your blissful sleep, Sister Louise, uh, and we'll speak to you again soon, either this weekend or um, this time next week. We'll be back, same time, same place, same deal. Ask me something. Bye for now.